flapping your hands and rocking back and forth and listening to music and stuff. Running back and forth too. Yeah. <clears throat> or stepping, like doing like... Uh, screaming can also be a singing method. Yeah. It's something yeah, that making is... making noises. Yeah. yeah. It's something that gets insulted a lot. So there's a lot of things that is like energy consuming that we neurotypicals don't even think about as something that could possibly drain you from energy. Starting off Today we're talking about autism and conserving energy. We've been touching it before when we've been talking about what tires you out and how we, how you can help from uh, sensory overload and stuff, but we thought we'd do a special episode on this. So when we were searching the internet for information about this, we got pretty disturbed over the fact that we didn't really find any information for people with autism on what they can actually do to conserve energy, but rather we found one category that we're talking about how tiring it is for parents with children with autism and how they need to recover and take time for themselves and stuff. It's fair enough, but maybe there's another side to it too. Like actually the person with autism might have a hard time too. Uh, and then there were like one category that we're talking about how you could heal autism through healing and energy. Healing, not really what we were looking for. There are two women who talked about autism in women and girls who were born that, regardless of whether or not they're transgender. Their names are Svenny Kopp and Sarah Hendricks. You aren't supposed to like reduce the day, like the time at school by like hours. You should rather reduce it by like days. So I was spending like 99% of my energy just trying to fit in and pretend like I was normal. And then all of my other energy went to, like the very little amount that I had left, uh, went to school and by the time school was over, I couldn't even do anything at home because I was so exhausted. Yeah, um, and that is very common. Okay, so I tried to make uh, an illustration of the difference between like neurotypical children and children with autism and maybe ADHD. This is an illustration of the morning. So when you're in school, you find out that the substitute because uh, your ordinary teacher is sick and that's annoying for the ordinary child but that was the last drip for the child with autism and so when that happens that's it acting neurotypical could be mimicking it could be echolalia which is mimicking the way someone talks or echopraxia which is mimicking the way someone moves around or something masking just hiding your autistic traits crowds and sensory input which basically means like if it's way too bright, then that is like a gigantic drain for me because that means that I have to actively hide that I'm bothered by it, <laughs> which is extremely difficult. Stimming is something that autistic people do. If I'm in public, then I am way less inclined to let myself do that because <laughs> I have such a huge problem with paranoia. A lot of autistic people do. Yeah. So, so trying to hide your autistic traits is so common. Yeah. It's like, you know, autistic people aren't stupid. <laughs> you yeah. know exactly what you think. Yeah. People have told me that I'm far more notice- like, I notice things way faster when it comes to, like, the way people look at me. So, like, if someone looks at me judgingly, I will notice it immedi almost immediately. Some ways that you can help um, conserve energy. In my case, these are just things that I do. When I'm already extremely exhausted, and starting to feel because when I get super tired, I start like it's genuinely painful. When that happens, <laughs> I turn to video games because then somehow I manage to forget about that like agony. I think it sort of like blocks out yeah. everything else so yeah. you can just focus on that. Yeah, like when I step away from the video game, all the pain comes back and all the exhaustion comes back, sometimes even worse than it was before. <laughs> Actually a lot of autistic people say that Yeah, and people with ADHD, that's what happens. As long as they keep playing, that's fine, but as soon as they stop, the uh, agony and and everything comes just rolling back. It's like a double-edged sword. You get to have a break from all the pain. But as soon as you step away, it either 
comes back or it comes back even worse. I think that also explains why some children with autism or ADHD really, like, really gets a meltdown. It's like taking away their surviving kit. Yeah, obviously stemming. It's a very common thing for people to try to do. Um, yeah. So don't prevent autistic people from stimming, yeah. please, please, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you prevent them from stimming, it can have like an extreme negative effect on them. If they're hurting themselves as a stimming method, then yeah, you should probably try to get them to choose some other sting stimming methods so they don't get hurt. But that's it, like helping them to choose something else, not yeah. stop them from stimming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, never stop them from stimming. Just try to help them find a different one yeah. so that it's less damaging for them. And then we have this. Oh yeah, hoodie. Um, I usually wear these just because it makes me feel comfortable. It's one of the only like shirts that I can wear that don't make me feel uncomfortable. It also helps with like light and stuff because I can like pull this down if it's like way too uh, bright outside. You can block out everything. Like, yeah. People sound <laughs> like it. Yeah, if I do this, I can't hear anything. Please let autistic and children and children with ADHD have their hoodies and capes and whatever headphones, whatever they need to block out, please just let them, don't have that kind of rule that they're not allowed to have hoodies on. Please, yes. please, please. It's so <laughs> simple, it doesn't cost anything. There's a discussion right now, Milan, that uh, there's a, a free school in Sweden that won't allow children to have hoodies and uh, track pants on. What? <laughs> because they become criminal from it. <laughs> That's just so stupid. Oh my god. Because not going to school is... might be worse yeah. <laughs> than having track pants on. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> and then obviously take breaks when needed. It sounds so easy, but it's really difficult. Yeah. Because it's it's hard to know your own limits. And yeah. if you really, really want to do your best and be like everybody else, then it's really hard to admit for yourself that you need to take breaks. So yeah. that's another reason why teachers need to help their autistic pupils. I'm not going to go up to you and say that I'm not feeling good. And also because you want to do your best and you want to cooperate and you want to show everybody that you want to try. I mean, it's hard for, for me as well. Yeah. Or somebody would say, well, just tell us when you had enough and you can go. I, w I wouldn't do that either. I would go like, I won't tell them. <laughs> Goodbye, stay safe. Next time we're going to talk about depression and mental illness.